really bad. There's about five people watching us eat. All their mouths are watering. I know, I see them. Eaten raw, boiled, or seared, the word Wagyu has become synonymous with quality. But what does Wagyu really mean? It actually literally means Japanese beef, and it's coveted all around the world. So Coveted? Be, yeah. This sounds like blasphemous. I can't wait to covet some of this Wagyu. Covet. Not only does Wagyu beef have higher levels of intramuscular fat called marbling, which is like the fat yeah. squirting out of it, but the texture of the meat is finer, resulting in a more flavorful eating experience and literally melting in your mouth hole. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Today we're hunting down the tastiest Wagyu in Tokyo. It is the fabric of dreams. From beef eaten raw. What is the tradition <laughs> in Japan when there's one piece left, but there's three people? What do you do about that? <laughs> to Tokyo's luxury beef experience. I am salivating over this. So take out a second mortgage on your condo, because today we're chowing down on the best Japanese beef in Tokyo. I've never felt more bad for everyone behind the camera than I do right now. Joining me on today's meaty quest is Shizuka Anderson. I work in Tokyo. I'm originally from Canada. I'm half Japanese. How does that affect your point of view about beef? When I came here, I never knew that beef could actually be that good. There's not just one type of Wagyu. You might find better kinds of Wagyu depending on the region. I don't know the names of the region that are the best, but you can seek those out and then try the different kinds of Wagyu, basically. Yeah, mm -hmm. do it yourself. Yes. You don't even need this show. <laughs> Is that kind of your point? No, don't stop watching, because we have some really good Wagyu for you today. Yeah. Perfect, we're gonna go eat, let's go. And then you'll walk that way and I'll walk that okay. way. It'll look cool, ready, go. <laughs> Location one, Meat Bar Nikoturashi. A place where dreams come true. A carnivore's heaven. If they let me move in, I would. We took a look inside. I can see that we're gonna be grilling our own meat at the table. It's called yakiniku in Japan. You basically grill the meat yourself. Before jumping into our barbecue, I'm getting an exclusive taste of raw wagyu with restaurant owner, Mr. Hiroshima. We are taking up this whole kitchen. Two bulky dudes. <laughs> I think the reason is we've eaten a lot of beef. The Japanese beef grading system gives Wagyu beef a grade from one to five. Meat Bar only serves A5, the highest quality available, sourced from cows who are fed the best food and complemented daily. What's so special about it, you can see, is the interspersion of fat kind of webbed throughout the protein. Other diners here, they usually have it pre-packaged, but today they've cut it just for us. I'm gonna grab one right here. A little bit of sauce, let's go for it. Super soft. It's got a bit of like cushiony bite to it. Wonderful mouth feel. And you can taste the fat in it actually. The aftertaste of it, like savory, oily fatness that stays in your mouth. So delicious. So good. Um, what is the tradition <laughs> in Japan when there's one piece left, but there's three people? Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, are you sure? Oh, no, I'm no. sure. Oh, no. dozo, dozo, uh -uh. dozo, dozo, no. dozo, dozo, uh -uh. dozo. No, no, okay. Today's main course is about quality over volume. Chuck flap, beef tongue, chuck short rib, outside knuckle, and top blade. Don't those sound like some good body parts? So I noticed there's no rice, no salad, no vegetables. No, we're here just for the meat. People can cook themselves, but he has opted to come here and cook it for us so that you don't mess it up. This is the front leg. I'm told that this can grill very quickly. Oh God, oh. super fast. Just barely kind of searing it until it turns a nice shade of brown. Puts it on the so edge good. just like that. 4K resolution beef. So good. What else do you guys want? Oh, well, I guess you could actually eat it for yourself. True. But like, I'm eating this for you so you don't have to. A little bit of soy sauce. Here so we go. Great. Oh my god. Mmm. Feel how that just like disintegrated in your mouth. It's just heaven here. Oh my god. I don't ever want to swallow it. It melted, it was very tender, a bit smoky. I've never felt more bad for everyone behind the camera than I do right now. Sugiwa. Oh, the next one is the tongue. I think people too often get stuck in a rut of like, okay, I know these five things I like, Dorito, tacos at Taco Bell, and then they hear cow tongue and they're like, oh, how could I ever? But man, 
Take the risk, it's worth it. Oh, there Ooh, it is. Ooh, that looks good. I mean, that looks stunning. This beautifully scored top here, the juice is kind of flowing inside like a delta of beefy oiliness. Squeezing some lemon on top. Let's try go. it out. Really chewy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The inside is very rare because it's a more robust meat. I think it cooks a lot more on the outside, and then the inside still remains a bit raw, but very tasty. This is the thigh. Putting it in some of this sweeter sauce and taking it down. I'm out of words. Guys, no, not you, behind the camera, guys. I'm sure you guys understand, like, we're just making the show. You're fine with this, right? We Maybe some other time you can, we'll get you. Some beef. <laughs> oh no. Wagyu. You can eat it raw, you can have it lightly seared, or you can put it in one of 101 hot pots at our next destination. Everybody get up. Right here, they have a menu and it very clearly lists everything out. If you're someone like me, you just take a quick look. It's kind of like a game of bingo. Um, this place is famous for its shabu shabu, a Japanese hot pot dish of thinly sliced meat and vegetables boiled in water. Mmm. 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 Shabu shabu is considered to be more savory and less sweet than sukiyaki, but today we're here for the sukiyaki. Also in a pot that is hot, a shallow iron vessel cooks up veggies and beef broth in a soy sauce. But honestly, you don't need to know how to do anything. This guy will do it all for you. Sir, have you ever done this before on camera? First time for him. Are you able to focus? Yeah, he's gonna do his best. Okay. <laughs> oh, music to my ears. So right away, this kind of layering, nice big pieces of meat. And this is the base of the soup. It's also just soy sauce, mm. a little bit of cooking alcohol and sugar as well. Pan likes it raw, whether it's shrimp, fish, or right now, eggs, mixed with the beef to give it a bit of a creamy goodness. And this is my first time having raw egg in Japan. Look at the way it just kind of drips off like some delicious snot. Let's try it out. Oh. Mm. <laughs> wow, the egg just adds like a nice dimension of creaminess to it. But the meat itself, I mean, from the sauce, completely sweet, and then that nice salty soy base coming through. Oishi. Huh? What is the point of these? I hope it's for decoration. I'm not worried about it. This is just the starter. The main course begins with a bit more broth. Add in onions, leeks, tofu, grated burdock, and these chewy noodles. I really appreciate how he's kind of compartmentalized the dish here. Like, yeah. it's very organized. Shiitake mushrooms, some more green onions, more mushroom, and more beef. It's interesting that they start you off with the meat, and they're like, listen, don't worry, we'll have to eat some vegetables, but here's a taste of meat immediately. Wait until it's bubbling hot and it's ready to eat. It's just very shallow. You can just move around in here and see all these different categories of the food cooking and boiling away. Oh. Ooh, I've never wanted a piece of tofu so badly. <laughs> Would I dip it in the egg? Here we go. I love tofu though. Mmm, that's hot though. <laughs> nice soft tofu, really soaked up those flavors diligently. Oh. Just the mix of can you hear that crunch? Mm -hmm. They're like squeaky. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at how long this has been boiling in here. It's turned extra brown because it's coated with that dark soy sauce. Mm. Mm. It's perfection. When is the first time you had this? To be honest, more often when I visited Japan um, at my grandmother's house. Which one is more yummy? This one or your grandma's? Ooh. Does your grandma watch YouTube? My grandma's gonna be offended if I, ooh. I mean, this is restaurant quality and expensive meat. So I'm gonna have to say maybe it's this one. But I love my grandma's, the grandma's oh, home taste. burn. Grandma's really home taste. So oh, I know, no. she told me earlier her grandma is subbed, she's a bestie. I'm so sorry if you've been hurt by this in any way. This is still really good. So that means yours is really, really good. Okay, let's come back. I'm sorry, hey, grandma. We're now headed to the final climax of the video, and there's no better place to climax than right here. Let me explain more. As far as I know, in this particular room we're going to, we're gonna sit across from the chef, and he's gonna cook in front of us. That's right, yeah. Yes. Um, guys, we've never produced anything on this show. Is waiting in the room for us. He did not come up here just to turn these lights on. <laughs> This is the most intimate dining experience in Tokyo. A cozy room, two to four seats, and your own personal chef. Today it's head chef Sushiya. Look at this, he's got his own bell. Is that the sake button? <gasps> you got it. Oh! 
This is not Benihana. The cooking is not meant to be a show and the chef is not an entertainer. The chef is a chef. First of all, this kind of beef, very rare. Oh, oh <laughs> it's still alive. I don't like that. This place serves up thick succulent cuts of beef, but there's a delicious catch. You gotta work your way up to it. First, a starter. A white sashimi mousse with fish broth and a steamed sea urchin on top. Wow, I have a rough history with these uh, uni. Do you like them? I'm, mm. Mm. That was like a savory seafood pudding. Next up, fresh seared lobster. It's moving a little bit. Oh my goodness. After it's cooked, it's served with lemon, lime, salt, and pepper. Garnish and eat. I'm not an expert at eating lobster. I don't know how to do this. Da ding Oh, that was so clean. Mm. Very nice. And just that sweet lobster sensation. Finally, this is what we came for. Kita Sasuma beef from Kagoshima. I don't know where that is, but I know that it's a beef dream factory. This is huge. The chef suggests cooking it rare and I listen to the chef. First, garlic with a bit of oil, then add salt and pepper. While that sizzles away, the chef prepares fresh wasabi right from the plant itself. This is a real treat, considering most off-the-shelf wasabi is merely an imitation of what you see here. Can I try just some paste alone? Maybe there's a lot, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. I've never wasabi. had the real stuff from a plant. Oh my oh, god. That's so fresh. It's strong. Very sharp sting, astringent quality. Yes. I love it. Once complete, the chef sections our beef into little bite-sized melt-in-your-mouth pieces. The difference between a regular restaurant and a restaurant like this is that the time that it takes to bring the food is so short. One, two, three, and it's on your plate and you can put it in your mouth. Right, so you're getting the flavor as it was intended to be. I'm gonna try just straight, plain. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Mmm, it's creamy. Yeah. It's just like the fat kind of like squirting yeah. out of it. <laughs> In a good way. It's not overly oily or anything like mm -hmm. that, but like a noticeable amount of oily beef sensation. Mm -hmm. And he says we should also eat it with a little bit of wasabi. No, I would love or to. I'm gonna put just a little bit of that on top. Mmm. That's oh, perfect. Mm. There's a huge difference with fresh wasabi. The normal wasabi just has so much salt inside. Here you can just control the salt, and then the wasabi just is fresh and kind of watery. Sir, thank you so much for this experience. Arigato gozaimasu. Beyond high quality beef, Japan's meticulous and attentive service heightens any meal to its highest potential. Serving up the perfect experience goes beyond passion. It's a duty, a moral obligation carried out with pride, and the results speak for themselves. This was a ton of fun today, eating all this different beef with you. Shizuka, thank you for joining thank me. Thank you so much. In addition, this whole itinerary today was put together by Tokyo by Food. They are putting on over 85 food experiences in Tokyo right now. Next year, they're gonna be in even more cities. Every time you make a reservation for a tour, they feed 10 people in Cambodia. It's a great company with a great cause. Also, if any of you are headed to Vietnam anytime soon, let me highly recommend a company called One Trip. One Trip is the highest rated tour company in Vietnam, doing tours from north to south in all major cities, including Hanoi, Nha Trang, Da Nang, Hoi An, and Saigon. You can experience food tours, adventure tours, and more. To learn more about One Trip, check out the links in the description down below. I will see you next time. A Peace! Peace. Uh, all right, you want to get more beef for dessert? Let's do it. Dessert beef. <laughs> <laughs> I'm inventing that now. <laughs> <laughs>